Hello, I'm Dallas Jackson, superintendent of the Forest Hills Schools, and welcome to another edition to Forest Hills Schools Today. This is our last episode for the 2012-2013 school year, and I just want to thank the viewers for allowing us to share a little bit of the happenings that are occurring at the Forest Hills Schools. We thought it was appropriate for this episode, though, to really touch on something that is a key uh, focus of the Forest Hill Schools, and that's our community partners. There are so many community partners that work with us at Forest Hills that they're just far too numerous to mention. However, there are two in particular that I would like to share with you today in today's episode. And in the future, maybe we can bring on many of these other partners to talk as well. But the two partners that uh, will be with us today, first of all, is Dr. Stephen Fagans. Dr. Fagans is the Vice President of Medical Affairs for Mercy Health Anderson Hospital. And he's going to talk about the partnership that we have and how it's expanding and the great things that are going on with the hospital and our students. The second uh, entity today that we want to speak with is uh, the Anderson Township. Anderson Township, under the direction of uh, actually Vicki Earhart, who is the administrator of Anderson Township, is going to share with us uh, some of the things that they have done with the schools and quite specifically a new program that we've worked on this year uh, and uh, with regarding our second grade students. So thank you for joining us for this episode and I'll be right back. Welcome back. Again, with me today is Dr. Stephen Fagans. Stephen is the Vice President of Medical Affairs for Mercy Health Anderson Hospital, which we locally just call Anderson Hospital or Mercy Hospital. So Dr. Fagans, today we want to talk about this partnership that the Forest Hills Schools has had and continues to have with Mercy. And uh, just, you know, maybe we'll talk a little bit about some of the things we've done in the past and then some of the things that we're looking at doing mm -hmm. in the future. Great. I think the first thing that comes to my mind when I uh, talk about Mercy is a project that ended actually last May, and that was the naming of the robot contest. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how that uh, came about? Yeah, so, so last, um, last year, um, actually two years ago, we purchased a $2.4 million Da Vinci robot. Um, it's the 18th in Cincinnati, so that's not really news. Um, and we actually... Um, uh, heard about in Florida somewhere where they talked about naming the robot and saw that on the internet. We thought that'd be a good idea. So I talked to uh, some of the folks from the district and said, do you guys want to do this name the robot contest? And the district was very welcoming and said, yeah, sure. So we created a uh, like a 20 minute talk that we took out to every elementary school on one Friday uh, last May. We had two different teams. We also went to Guardian Angels and uh, Mac at Heart of Mary for the fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. And so they all had to bring a pencil, um, and we gave them a little card. Uh, at the end of the talk, they had to give us the name of the, of the robot. So we talked about teamwork. We talked about what happens in the operating room. We talked about you can't do anything without your team member assisting you when you're doing surgery and what that means. And then we talked about our robot, and we talked about the fact that our robot doesn't have a name, and, um, and we'd like them to, for them to help us out. So uh, we got 2,200 submissions. Oh my gosh. On Memorial Day, um, we sat around the table uh, and chose two from each school. So we had 16, uh, 16 finalists. The 16 finalists were invited uh, two weeks later on a Saturday morning to have breakfast with our actual robot team um, to uh, play with the robot. <clears throat> we awarded the, uh, the winner. I had to look up and see who the winner was. Some of the names were incredible. And so <clears throat> the robot uh, winner was Jonah Mayfield from Wilson for Sarah, which is um, Surgically Advanced Robotic Aid. We got a lot of um, acronyms like that. They were, they were cute um, all over the place. And then um, the students in two groups got to go into the operating room. We created an actual operating room experience. They scrubbed. They put on the actual drapes. They put on um, scrubs, which they got to keep, and, um, and went in and we had our... Um, our mannequin that we do resuscitation on as the patient, and the, the actual operating room team showed them how to work as a team wow. in the operating room. So uh, that was great fun. It was like the, um, the Disney World experience, you know, where you go up behind the scenes, mm -hmm. and, um, and, and the parents couldn't go uh, in the operating room with the students. They had to hear about it, and they got a grader's gift certificate, and great. the winner won an iPad. You know, I think that's really important. And, and, and when we talk about a community partnership, that's a, just a prime example of that, is authentic learning for students. Uh, another authentic learning experience that, the, that our high schools uh, uh, 
uh, have had an experience of working with, with Mercy is the Explorers program. What a great opportunity for some of our high school students to actually explore our different uh, fields in the medical uh, industry. Can you tell us a little bit more about that program? Mm -hmm. So the Medical Explorers is part of the Dan Beard Boy Scout Council. It's part of, of it's considered adult learning. Mm -hmm. um, it's Explorers program, so it's sanctioned, been around for many years. Um, you may know about it with the paramedics mm -hmm. and whatnot. There are 10 hospitals in town that do this. We do it the best. This is unique in that we only partner with the Forest Hills District. And so there are 12 students who apply and are chosen from Turpin, 12 students who apply and are chosen from Anderson. And so they've actually put some skin in the game even before they start. And then we choose them and they have to dress up. They have to go through HR and get all their tests and all that kind of stuff. Um, and they have to present. So they have homework um, for, and, and two or three students each time, uh, present someone who works in the hospital. So they had to call them up, interview them, use a grid, present, use their presentation skills. And then when they go and they visit parts of the hospital, they have to dress appropriately, they have IDs. It's a real experience. And so during the course of the school year, there are eight different sessions. The first is the, the orientation and the parents are invited to that. And then the rest is just the students. They go, it's like the Disney World experience again, where you go behind the scenes, um, you see stuff that um, you wouldn't see otherwise, and you have to interact with the people who actually do that job. So the beginning is <clears throat> people who uh, may have to receive the, her the helicopter, um, who may have to do the trauma, who may have to cook the meals. Um, then you go and you do it yourself. And so one time you put the scrubs on, you go in the operating room, we've got it set up. One time you go into the kitchen, um, and, you know, there are 18 different diets in a hospital, you know, low sodium and diabetic and cholesterol and all this kind of stuff. And you have to figure out which one's which. And so among other things, there are jobs, you go downstairs where the generator is, uh, find out what happens when the power goes out. And so during the course of the year, um, the box that is the hospital becomes open to you. And not only you, but others that you talk about, that you talk to, know about what goes on in the hospital, and you have a better idea about a job that you may want to do. Um, and, the, and the greatest um, thing for me is when I've got kids that come in and they want to do, like, be an architect, and at the end they want to be a doctor or a nurse, um, that we've changed their mind. And, uh, and so we've influenced them into something that, that hopefully they can do. And we need people, good, sharp people like the folks in this district, to work for us in the future, too. And what, a, what a wonderful experience for our students. Um, another authentic learning experience that really excited me was when the, we began talking and you came to me and you shared that you have a real authentic problem that the hospital needs our students' assistance to solve. And that's the parking lot problem. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit about that. So um, you actually have um, community forums where you bring mm -hmm. folks like us in and you talk about things that we could partner. And so I was sitting in one of those and I was hearing about how the Nagel students had worked with some local employers and others to do projects. And I had just come from a meeting where we were talking about we need to design the parking lot. I didn't even know that there were people who did that. It's a whole profession. Um, it's extremely complex. It's a math problem. So I talked to Mrs. Adams, uh, Natasha Adams, the principal, uh, and I said, I have this idea. Um, you may think it's kind of funny, but, but maybe it is. Maybe it's not. The math department came over to the hospital. Uh, we went through the drawings, and we kind of talked about it. Uh, and an encore class was created. I think there were like 50 or 60 students who applied, 32 is the max that, could be, that we could take. Um, and we all took turns talking with the students. I talked with the students about how, how do you staff an ER? How do you figure out what time of day people are going to be driving into the parking lot? How do you decide on what size of parking lot and how do you, you know, how many handicapped spots and how much foliage do you have? It was, fa I actually learned a lot. It was fascinating. And then at the end, um, the, uh, I think, six different teams um, presented to a panelist, and we were mean. Um, we, we grilled them. Why did you do this? Why did you have a handicapped spot here? Where's, where's your lighting uh, distance between these folks? They dressed up. Um, they presented professionally. I know that they practiced the day before um, on, for, for some of the, the teachers mm -hmm. and whatnot. And Team 5. Uh, one and actually team five on June 15th, that's a Saturday morning, hopefully you can be there, with hospital leadership, medical staff leadership. Uh, they're going to enjoy breakfast and we're going to kind of have a simulated breaking ground um, on this parking lot that we have to uh, expand the parking lot before we expand our hospital, which we'll do next, um, next year. Well, you know, and again, what I, again, I really appreciate the work that Mercy has 
done, especially with this project, that actually, if I'm am, am, uh, correct, that you invited some of the representatives from Danis, who mm -hmm. actually is part of this mm -hmm. group, to work with our kids to talk about what uh, the architect and engineers have to do in regards to this project. So we had Kevin O'Brien. Um, who's our project manager for this project. Mm -hmm. um, some of the architects came over. They spent time. Uh, it was really nice. This, the, the class was the first class of the day, so it was relatively easy for us to come over and, and talk. Um, they talked to the students about a lot of things, and they set up criteria. I actually saw the drawings are still up in our, um, our war room for the hospital, and they're going to put them on PDF, and we'll show them. One of the expectations that we have when the students come on June 15th that, that morning is the five uh, students, the winning team, number five, will present their project to us and their families. Wow. Um, and that just kind of you know, brings folks into the hospital. We'll have a nice breakfast. We'll have an opportunity to just once again open up the hospital. Um, it's much nicer to come to the hospital on those terms than other you know, terms um, so that you, you learn more about, you know, because uh, one interesting thing, I was talking with the students and I actually just was curious how many were born at our hospital. And like everyone but one, uh, we're born there. It just shows you just the, the whole continuity of this mm -hmm. community. Well, um, as a superintendent of schools, um, providing enriched and learning opportunities for students is key. And I know as we begin to move forward with this expanded partnership that there, there are a lot more things, at least on my horizons, that I think we can do together. And, and one of those in particular that I've given a lot of thought to is to basically providing some internships for some of our high school students. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you see that, something like that, occurring in regards to providing some real actual learning opportunities where some of our students can intern with some of your people in the medical profession? Mm -hmm. And we've done that through Great Oaks mm -hmm. and other uh, mechanisms. We've created the internship. Um, our partner, Wellington Orthopedics, um, already has these internships. Mm -hmm. We took the same application that, that they mm -hmm. have with, with Diana Carter to, to use. Um, we've got that ready to go. We, okay. I mean, and, and it's, uh, uh, you can get credit for that. You can volunteer and just get some hours. Um, I saw an application. Someone asked me about a, a, a former district student who, who is going to go to medical school, and he had one of the things on his application is he played for the St. Louis Cardinals. I thought was pretty interesting. I want to meet this guy. <laughs> and so we get all kinds of applications. We do vet folks. Um, there is some training, but having that as an experience, either an internship for which you can get mm -hmm. credit or volunteership for which you get uh, a nice thing on your resume, and you actually do some good mm -hmm. for some folks. One of the things that, the, that we like to do with the interns is teach folks how to interact with sick people, uh, people who are hurting, old people people who you might not come in contact with normally as a student, as a high school student, um, to learn how to do that. And those skills, you know, carry with you uh, through, you know, beyond. Mm -hmm. And it's something that as an experience you don't think about until you get in there and, and do it and just teach folk, folks how to go to the emergency department, how to go to a place where there are uncomfortable things being discussed. And, and that's, I think, the richness of the internship as well as volunteer things. Um, is to do that in a, in, a, in a controlled setting before we have to do it in an uncontrolled setting. Absolutely. And again, I just want to thank you for the leadership that you have provided for Mercy Hospital in regards to helping uh, the different programs with Forest Hill Schools. Um, and thank you for being with us today. And, and I really look forward to even uh, getting back together and talking about more and, and exciting things for our students as we move forward. Great. Great fun and privilege. I want to say thank you again to Dr. Fagans for his time today. And in just a few minutes, we'll be back with Vicki Earhart uh, from Anderson Township. Welcome back to this segment of Forest Hill Schools Today. Today, we are uh, talking to Vicki Earhart, the Township Administrator for Anderson Township. And our discussion points today are basically talking about the great community partnership that the Forest Hills Schools has with Anderson Township. I know that uh, there's been a lot of great things going on for years and years. I think mm -hmm. this year we've kind of taken it up to the next level, yes. Vicki. But let's talk about what little of the things that happened in the past, and then we'll talk about the thing that uh, the the events that just most recently happened. Sure. So, well, Vicki, let, let's start with um, you know there, th we've been a partner with Anderson Township now for several years. Such things as Arbor Day mm -hmm. um, and uh, learning about the township government. Tell us a little bit about those couple of activities and, and other things as well. 
Sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, we started a Township 101 class, if you will, for uh, residents, for adult residents through the community education program with Forest Hills. And at one point we decided that we needed to roll that out to some of the students in the school district. Uh, so we had an opportunity at Air Elementary School with a third grade class to bring the Township 101 program to them. And essentially what it is is kind of a, a primer on what the township function is, uh, what each of our departments do, how our trustees are elected by the residents. And we had such a great response from AIR uh, in 2011 was the first program. We really enjoyed that. So we talked about maybe expanding that a bit. Uh, we also participate, as you mentioned, Arbor Day. Since 2010, we have provided tree seedlings to mostly second grade, but occasionally third grade students in every one of the elementary schools. And we've had staff visit maybe four or five of the schools to explain how to plant the tree and care for the tree and the importance of trees to tie it into uh, the environment and the science classes, um, those types of things. We've also um, been very pleased with the cooperation with the school district. We've not only made some infrastructure improvements to crosswalks, sidewalks, signage, but uh, we've had the walk to school events mm -hmm. where our staff uh, work with the students. They actually walk to school with them and teach them about signage and obeying the different laws and making sure they cross the street in a safe manner and those types of things. Um, so that's been enjoyment for us but it's also hoping you know we're hoping to make the students safer on their way to school and teach them healthy habits as well. You know Vicki and it, it, you just mentioned something that kind of reminds me I just want to thank you for uh, and Anderson Township for the cooperation that we have with the local officials in regards to our fire and safety as well as the Hamilton County Sheriff's Department which the branch comes out of Anderson Township uh, the, the work that they do to help us in our schools has been, has been phenomenal. But I'm really excited to talk about this new program that we just uh, happened at Forest Hill Schools, and that is a, a program uh, which really uh, kind of took it to the next level mm -hmm. where we actually, or you actually, had an opportunity to work with every one of our second grade students yes. in kind of this really expanded program. Not just you personally, but a number of different volunteers in a number of different areas. Mm -hmm. uh, so many that it's, it's, uh, it's just been great. So why don't we talk a little bit about that particular activity? Sure. Um, the program you're referring to is the, as you know, is the History to Schools right. program. Uh, it kind of began where we had some, uh, a teacher that contacted the township that wanted one of our elected officials to come to the school and speak about history. Um, Ms. Peggy Rice, who's mm -hmm. the president of our board of trustees, has a passion for history. In fact, she uh, dressed up as Richard Clough Anderson and marched down Beachmont Avenue during the Bicentennial Parade. And she's been instrumental in the township uh, constructing the Anderson Township History Room, which is uh, a great partnership that we have with the Anderson Township Historical Society. So when the teacher called Ms. Rice and said, can you come to our school and speak about history? Uh, Ms. Rice called me and she said, ah, you know, I'd love to do it, but I'm not quite sure, you know, I'm the, the expert on this and can we get the Historical Society involved? Well, long story short, we ended up forming a committee with members of the Forest Hill School District. Um, from the elementary schools, we had some teachers as well as your co coordinator, your elementary co curriculum coordinator, uh, volunteers from the Anderson Township Historical Society, Ms. Rice and some township staff. And what started as an opportunity to maybe do a uh, parents' night at the history room where students could come in with their families and experience it, it kind of blossomed. Um, the teachers showed us their curriculum requirements and so we decided and as you know I called you mm -hmm. and said can we turn this into a field trip and you very graciously agreed and um, we ended up covering a full day of activities for all six of the elementary schools. Um, the students arrived and I have to tell you the first day the first class that arrived when the buses pulled up and the students' faces were pressed against the glass and they were waving, they were so excited. Uh, we took them into our Board of Trustees meeting room and gave them a mini Township 101, which focused on 
the role of government and the systems of government, which is one of the requirements that mm -hmm. the teachers have to, to educate the children. Uh, we talked about what each, each of our departments do, what the township trustees do. We talked about volunteerism and how a lot of residents in the community that may be their parents, older siblings, um, aunts, uncles, contribute to the, to the greatness of this community by volunteering their time. Um, at the conclusion of that, the students were broken into five groups and they traveled to various areas in the building. Uh, one group would go to the history room and again, the Historical Society docents uh, volunteered their time. They taught the students about different artifacts that are in the history room. They also showed students what it was like to be in a classroom in the late 1800s. Uh, students had an opportunity to write on slate and to sit in a very teeny tiny wooden desk. Um, they learned about how the students didn't drink from plastic water bottles but from a pail mm -hmm. and uh, many of the students automatically knew that would be an issue as far as transmitting germs and that type of thing so they were um, very interested in that and shared their knowledge with us. Uh, another group of students traveled to a nature walk which covered the science requirement. Um, our green space inspector who is also a botanist took them on a trail along the Anderson Lake and they were able to see what wildlife exists as far as uh, we have a blue heron, we have a white crane, uh, the students were able to touch tadpoles mm -hmm. and fish that we I, had. I heard about the tadpoles. You heard about the tadpoles. the bull tadpoles. <laughs> the bull tadpoles. Uh, the students were able to do that. And then the, at the end of the trail is our Buckeye Grove. So the students learned about the history behind the Ohio State tree and uh, the importance of trees in the environment. Then the students uh, also participated in a safety services, which is a continuation of the local government uh, feature where they were able to examine fire engine, public works vehicles, and sheriff's cruisers up front. And we had um, public safety employees who were there and explained the various uh, things that they do on a daily basis. Uh, the other element was, again, related to history where students learned about the early settlers of Anderson Township, including the Clark family, the Miller family, and the Wolfangel family. Uh, they learned about transportation as far as flat boats and how they were used to uh, get to Anderson Township and then disassembled and used for other purposes. And the students were given a history challenge to take home with them so they could do it with their family where they would essentially travel to different places in the township. They'd see the then picture from perhaps the 1800s and the now picture, and they were supposed to identify those. Um, the other uh, event that we had was related to mapping. Our planning and zoning staff took the students into the theater and showed them um, a map of their school zone and then showed them aerial photographs of the location where the school was in the 50s, if it was there or not, up to current day. And students were able to learn how to identify the legend and scale on the map. Uh, they also were able to place a star on the map that identified the street where they lived. And those maps were given to the teachers to take back to the classroom for further study. Um, at the conclusion of the day, the students participated in an Arbor Day celebration, which we used to do at the schools, but we had them here and they were given a seedling and taught about how the tree is to be planted. So it was a full day. I can, it sounds like more than a full <laughs> day. Um, I, if you have just a second, you and I talked a little earlier and uh, you shared with me an experience regarding lunch. Yes. If you remember that, share that a little bit. Just yes. kind of a fun experience. Eh? Yes, first of all, as I told each of the students and the teachers and the parent chaperones who we very much appreciate, uh, we learned as much from the students as we did uh, from, that we hope they did from us. Uh, we had lunch scheduled at noon. And very quickly on the, the first day, the students were saying, we're hungry, we're hungry. And by the second day, the next group of students, they're saying, we're hungry. We normally eat a lot earlier than this. So we ended up adjusting our schedule. We didn't realize they ate 
earlier in the day. And, you know, we had so many um, great experiences with the students. We had students that came back with their parents over the weekend to the history room and one of the historical society docents told me she she didn't have to work that day the student oh, okay. took his family around and gave them the full tour yeah. so it's just been very entertaining for us it was educational for us and we appreciate the the effort that went in from the school district's part to pull this together well um you know, I've received a lot of feedback from parents, from students, and I know you have as well. Yes. I mean, I, I, I know about the bull tadpole. I know about yeah. the flat boats. I've learned about these things myself yes. from the feedback. But what type of feedback have you gotten? We received letters, stacks of letters from these students, and we are working on answering some of the letters oh. because there were questions. So we want to get back to those students. But um, we heard our, the favorite part was when we could put the star on our street where we live. Uh, we loved hearing about the history. Um, some of the students talked about the fact that they didn't realize that the Wolf Angles, you know, they know Wolf Angle Road, but they didn't know why it was named Wolf Angle Road, so now they do. Uh, a lot of the students commented on the nature walk. That was one of their favorite things, to be able to touch the tadpole and um, just very, very positive comments. Uh, we had teachers that took the time to write thank you notes to each and every one of the, the people that presented and, and that just touched our hearts that, that they did that. So. Very, very good. Well, again, a key piece that we want to bring about here is to, to share with our community that partnerships within our community with the Forest Hill Schools is so important, especially those authentic learning experiences. I want to thank you, Vicki, for the work that you did and all the volunteers. Uh, Peggy uh, Reese for her work that she did to get this yes. all going and for our staff as well uh, I know that it took a lot of effort and then mm -hmm. the last and final question how about next year definitely okay. um, we are we are very excited about doing it again uh, one of the things that we're considering you know we're we sent a questionnaire to all the students and the parents that are involved and we'd like to get their feedback but we know that Mercer Elementary, for mm -hmm. example, covers both Newtown and Anderson, sure. so we'd like to reach out to Newtown and see if they would be interested Perfect. in participating on that day. That is great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much again, thank and thank you for joining us for another episode of Four Hills Schools Today.